down 200 feet up this fancy hallway here. The lake is behind that wall right there, about 250 feet through solid concrete. Where we're standing right here, this is somewhat near the bottom of the lake. With very, very few exceptions, pretty much solid concrete surrounding us right now, 6.6 .6 million tons of it doing that. And that was, in fact, the largest single mass of concrete poured in one place in the history of the world up until then. There's actually as much mass in this dam as there is in the largest pyramid in Egypt, but we're bigger than that pyramid by about 10%. So a huge concrete monolith that sits here in Black Canyon holding back that largest man-made lake in the United States out there, Lake Mead. They put these air vents here. This is our only source of breathing air. That's a main function, I would guess. Uh, they don't pump anything in here. It's kind of a natural flow. You can feel it right now. This air is actually being drawn over to those stairs at the edge of the uh, dam here. It's kind of a chimney effect going up there. And we're going to show you those stairs next, by the way, on your tour. Another reason is they wanted an avenue to bring the air into the dam to help dry out this mass of concrete. So serving those two purposes. Now, I'm going to send you down there, take those photographs, come on back when you're finished. Do watch your head, and it is a circle, so it does tend to be a little slippery, so please watch your step. So go ahead and uh, head down there. I'll just wait back here for you. stop here in just a moment, but let me kind of preface that for you. Uh, from that first tunnel down below, you came up, we came up 270 feet into the dam. The lake is behind that wall right there, about 75 feet, and we're, uh, uh, you remember what I said down below, down there, we were 250 feet from water here, it's only 75 feet away. That's because the higher in the dam you go, the more narrow the dam becomes, it kind of tilts inward as you go higher. 
the top of the dam, the roadway up there, is only 45 feet thick. So in other words, this dam extends from what it sits on, the base of this dam, who's asking about that, the base of this dam is 660 feet of concrete, longer than two football fields. And then it narrows to that very thin 45 feet thick at the top. So basically what Hoover Dam is, it's a curved concrete wedge that sits here in Black Canyon. And where we're standing right here, this is somewhere near the top of the lake out there, which would not normally be true, but we're almost at a historic low. That lake is about half full right now. Uh, it is, uh, we've been going through a drought, obviously, for the last uh, dozen years. There's still a lot of water out there, even though it's half full. It's still about four trillion gallons of water, exerting water pressure on the dam, right? That water pressure is forcing the water through the cracks and the fissures of the surrounding canyon. You may have noticed some of that as you walk through the tunnels down there. We have eight miles of tunnels here at Hoover Dam, so that seepage adds up. Too much to waste, obviously, even in a drought. So they went with it by putting all these troughs in everywhere. They collect that water send it out there to the river so it's not wasted. Mm -hmm. Now that's one way they collect the water, very important second way, and it has to do with where we're going next. That's the water that comes around the edges of the dam because the dam isn't attached to the canyon, and it's not attached for that reason somebody mentioned down below, earthquakes. We have, we're seismically active here. And what they did is they notched out the canyon on each side, about 75 feet into the canyon wall. They wedged the dam in those, uh, in those uh, notches, so it's being held in place by the water pressure, but they didn't adhere it to the canyon, because if it were attached, it might crack if you know we had some movement. So what I find fantastic or, uh, 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 is the fact that this dam actually moves. The dam moves when we have earthquakes. So where we're going next is um, to where they collect that water. It's called the seepage gallery. Uh, you're going to mostly hear it at the bottom, so if you take a moment to listen, it sounds like a rushing river down there. It's very audible. Now, when you get down here to the end, there is, uh, there's the staircase, obviously. It's so steep, and you'll see this when you look at it, that the workers actually say it's harder walking down than going up because of the narrow treads and that angle. I've never walked the stairs, and of course, you would never have to do that. I was just joking about that. And if you'll listen, can you hear the water at the bottom? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can. 10,000 gallons of water a minute seep through the eight miles of tunnels and around the edges, you can hear part of it right there. And uh, they built the dam to withstand an 8.6 earthquake on a 10 point scale. That's quite a jolt this thing can receive. Never really had one of those. Uh, eight, uh, I'm sorry, 5.2 was the largest recorded earthquake here back in the 1950s. They tell me it was no damage whatsoever. Uh, they're filming here constantly and it's a kind of an interesting process. We never stop what we're doing. This is a working dam. They have to film around us. It is uh, quite, uh, and it helps pay the bottom. It helps with the bottom line here. It helps pay the bills, just like these t these tours. That's why you're charged for the tour because we're self-funded here. We're a federal facility, but we don't use tax revenue to operate this dam. So we make our money through the sale of uh, electricity, tours, films. It all goes. Sixty-three million dollars is what it costs to operate Hoover Dam. So I am a federal employee, but I'm not paid by you, the U.S. taxpayer. I'm paid by you, the U.S. tourists, being here. So my family thanks you for being here, by the way. I never want to take that for granted.